Cassie, look, the Perth Australia Day fireworks show. You know, I love fireworks. The way they go up into the sky and then explode with a burst of colour and light. You know what? Let me tell you and the audience watching about fireworks. Loud bangs were first produced in China around 200 BC. The Chinese discovered that by heating bamboo, the air pockets within the stem would expand and eventually blast outward, making a loud noise. They soon discovered black powder to make the explosions even louder. Of course, as with all technological advancements, the military soon took control of gunpowder. In the 13th century, devices such as bombs, exploding arrows, cannons and guns slowly spread through China, Arabia and Eastern Europe. The European Renaissance, however, created the first true fireworks, using black powder for enjoyment rather than war. While it may seem relatively simple to go chuck a bunch of chemicals together, light a fuse and then take cover, it's actually quite a complex process which allows fireworks to launch, explode into shapes, and then fill the sky with colour. And I think it's fascinating. Podcast, produced by the burning gunpowder, is forced out of the bottom of the device, making it accelerate upwards. The biggest fireworks can reach heights of up to 400 metres, and from here they can be seen over 80 kilometres away. It's pretty impressive. Hot gas blasting out of the back of a rocket only allows it to reach such astonishing altitudes due to Newton's third law of motion. 300 years ago, the English physicist wrote that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. You can see examples of this with the recoil of a cannon. This means that as the rocket pushes on the exhaust, the exhaust pushes back on the rocket, making the rocket go up as the gas goes down, without needing any moving parts. Launching the firework is only one part of the system, however. A second fuse, located inside the firework itself, is set to ignite a second reservoir of black powder. This one is set to explode outwards, and contains the components which create light. These are known as firework stars, and they are essentially concentrated sparklers. These stars are made to blast out in a variety of orientations to create a multitude of shapes. This can range from simple round shells to more complex stars and hearts. The shapes are actually quite simple to produce, although much harder to create are the explosive stars themselves. I'm going to break them down into how we get the light and then how we colour it. Firstly, getting the light. In many respects, a firework star is simply a bigger version of a sparkler. The same ones which you can buy from any shopping centre. The mixture that makes up sparklers is comprised of a fuel and an oxidizer. Metal powder is added to produce the colour we see, but we'll go into that later. The fuel of a star consists mainly of charcoal. The star needs to burn bright and fast, so it simply can't get enough oxygen from the air to do this. Instead, an oxidizer is used which provides a concentrated source of oxygen. In this case, we're using potassium nitrate. So, how concentrated exactly? Well, here is a pretty cool demonstration. We've got a bunch of sparklers, and we're going to tape them up and drop them in the water. Water and sparklers don't usually mix. What will happen when we put the tape on it? To see that it's burning underwater. So, we've now got the basic idea. Let's try it with a few more sparklers. So that's really cool. Fire underwater. All because of oxidizers. So, we've got to fuel an oxidizer to produce heat. But if we want to have light as well, 
then we're going to need to add some metal shavings. Over time, people found that by adding different metals to fireworks, they would burn a different colour. Lithium compounds burn red, copper blue. By adding different metal salts in differing ratios, the specific colour of fireworks can be selected. So we know that different metals produce different colours when they're burnt. But why is this so? For that, we'll need to enter the realm of the atom and the most complex field of scientific research to date, quantum physics. In order to understand what's going on inside an atom to create such consistent light, we're going to first need to understand what an atom is. An atom is the smallest unit of a chemical element. For example, a water molecule, H2O, is made up of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. The atom itself is made up of three basic particles. Positive protons, negative electrons, and neutral neutrons. The protons and neutrons reside in the atom's central nucleus and account for nearly all of the atom's mass. The negative electrons are attached to and orbit the positive nucleus. Every atom has the same number of protons and electrons, so that the two different charges balance each other out. Now, this gets interesting when you look at where the electrons are orbiting. Electrons orbit only at very specific distances from the nucleus, which are defined by the wave nature of the electron. You following? Now, this is easy enough to understand when you have electrons orbiting the nucleus at their lowest energy state. They fill up the lower shells first, and then the next, and so on. You can see this pattern when you compare atoms with steadily increasing numbers of protons and electrons. If we excite an electron by heating it, the electron responds by jumping up an energy level. But since the electron can only ever be found at a specific level, we run into a bit of a problem. The particle has to get from A to B, but without travelling through any of the space between them. And it has to do this instantly. By performing a quantum leap, the electron is able to jump between the levels without ever passing through the space between them. As strange as this may seem, it's been backed up by every scientific test to date. Quantum physics is our best scientific theory yet. When the electron stops being excited, it jumps back down the shells, again performing another quantum leap. Due to the law of conservation of energy, by dropping down the energy levels, the electron emits some electromagnetic radiation, a photon of light. The frequency of this light is directly due to the nature of the electron jump. Since all atoms of an element are exactly the same, when many billions of these leaps occur every second, together they can produce enough photons to be detected. If the radiation produced is of the right frequency, then we can see this as light. Metals perform this leap exceptionally well each, when heated, producing a different frequency of electromagnetic radiation. It just so happens that a select few of these are incandescent in a range that we can observe as being different colours. When added to a firework star, we see the colours of physics painted upon a black canvas of the night. All fireworks are just variations upon these same basic principles. Firework makers can mix and match to create the perfect effects for the most spectacular of fireworks. From a bamboo bomb to rocket propellant, underwater fire to the quantum realm, fireworks are truly a remarkable creation of the human race. It's 3,000 years of human history, bringing you a spectacular from the quantum realm. Next time you look up at the lights of the sky, remember that.